This video clip describes briefly some essential information about how to perform a spirometry test in the clinic setting. The learning objective is following observing this video, you should be able to evaluate the quality of a spirometry test to determine whether it was performed properly meeting ATS ERS guidelines. First, we must make sure that all equipment necessary to perform a proper spirometry test is present in the clinic. This includes a computer, a spirometry device, a mouthpiece, nose clips, tissues, and a chair. The person performing the spirometry test must have excellent familiarity with the equipment, the software, and their use. Training of a spirometry technician can take many months in order for the person performing the test to be able to perform proper spirometry efforts. The spirometry technician must understand how and when to confirm that the equipment is within calibration. In the example we're showing here, the technician is demonstrating that the equipment is able to determine volumes of air expired at three different flow rates. That is low flow, medium flow, and high flow. Each equipment manufacturer will describe in the manual how to perform this check of the equipment and how often it should be performed. If the results demonstrate that the data are outside of the reference standards, then the equipment should be checked and serviced according to manufacturer's specifications. Prior to beginning the test, the technician should explain the test to the patient. The patient should be instructed to loosen tight clothing and to remove any dental devices such as retainers. The technician then instructs the patient to sit or stand with good posture during the test. The patient should maintain either sitting or standing position for all efforts. However, a chair should be placed behind the patient if standing in case he or she gets lightheaded and needs to sit between efforts. Next, the patient is instructed to form a tight seal around the mouthpiece while performing the spirometry test. In general, a nose clip should be used to make sure no air escapes from the nose while inhaling or exhaling. Let's look at a test and see how the patient performs. Take a deep breath in, put a nice seal, and blow up hard and fast. Blow, 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 blow. Okay, deep breath in. Obviously, this is a poor effort. We're gonna try that again. Now let's look at how to perform a proper effort. The first technique demonstrated here is to have the technician tell the patient to take the largest possible inhalation filling the lungs to capacity and then to exhale as forcefully and completely as possible until plateau is reached or until at least six seconds have elapsed. The second technique is to have the patient perform tidal breaths and then when comfortable to have the patient take the largest possible inhalation filling the lungs to capacity, and then to exhale as forcefully and completely as possible until plateau is reached or until six seconds have elapsed. And deep breath in. At least three efforts should be performed with a maximum of eight attempted in order to meet ATS ERS reproducibility standards. Efforts should be evaluated for the following. Numbers of acceptable efforts if fewer than three extrapolated volume greater than 5% of FVC or 150 milliliters, whichever is greater. Hesitation or false start to effort. Delayed time to peak expiratory flow rate. Coughing, glottic closure, mouthpiece obstruction, air leak around mouthpiece, inconsistent effort, exhalation of less than six seconds, highest two FEV1 varying from each other by more than 150 milliliters, highest two FVCs varying from each other by more than 150 milliliters. Let's look at a few reasons for having a poor effort. Here is an example of hesitation or false start to effort. Here is an example of delayed time to peak expiratory flow rate.
There is an example of coughing. Here's an example of glottic closure. Here's an example of mouthpiece obstruction. Here's an example of air leak around the mouthpiece. Here's an example of inconsistent effort. Here's an example of exhalation of less than six seconds. Here's an example of highest two FEV1 varying from each other by more than 150 milliliters. With some patients, it will not be possible to obtain reproducibly good efforts, even with the most skilled technicians supervising the testing. But in the vast majority of patients, such testing will produce efforts that are important in evaluating the health of the patient. The CDC, in cooperation with NIOSH, has distributed a poster providing guidance on proper coaching techniques to obtain valid spirometry results every time. This document provides concise information on how to identify and correct technical and equipment errors, sometimes encountered during spirometry testing. In this brief time, we have reviewed how to perform and evaluate the performance of a proper spirometry test. There are two take-home messages. One, technicians performing spirometry testing must be properly trained and supervised. And two, clinicians evaluating spirometry tests must be skilled in recognizing when tests are properly performed and when they are not properly performed.